So now I'm going to be teaching Adho Mukha Svanasana, also known as Downward Facing Dog. Really key, important posture in, in yoga. It's a wonderful barometer for your practice actually, and where you are and where you hold tightness and stiffness. And it really works every part of your body, literally, from head to toe. Um, really the key is to get length in the spine. You really work it, creating that length and extension from the hands right the way through the spine, right back up into the hips. And if possible, you're going to try and work and lengthen the legs as well. I'm going to demonstrate it very quickly to you and I'm going to show you some really important points, that, key points that you need to be very mindful and aware of. So we're going to be starting from an all fours position. Knees underneath the hips, wrists beneath the shoulders, or if you are a little bit more flexible, you can have the knees slightly further back and the wrists slightly further forward. You're going to turn the toes under, and then from this position, you're going to stretch back into this V-shaped downward dog. Okay, now what tends to happen is that it might well look something like this. Okay, and I want you to see if you can think about getting this length, this primary length of the hands to the hips, and thinking about maybe keeping the legs bent, like so initially, and lifting the buttock bones up, getting that length, and then maybe thinking about stretching the legs towards the edge, but without losing that length in the spine. Okay? The other thing to be mindful of is what's going on in your hands. The tendency is for a lot of people is for the arms to bend out, the biceps are very tight, there's a, a lot of tension around the neck and the shoulders and the arms. What you're looking for is, is almost like you could turn the arms, externally rotate the upper arms, the biceps roll away from each other, the triceps roll towards each other, and that'll create a space and a, feel, a feeling of space and freedom in the neck, the trapezius muscles descending. Keeping that set and that stabilizing over the arm and the shoulders, then turn the palms back down. So it's almost like you're twisting a little bit of rope or a flannel that you wanted to ring two directions to make the arm very strong and firm, and then you get a lovely continuity of energy through the arms. The hands will tend to want to be maybe crooked, your foundation is really important, is key. And really spreading and rooting through the, the fingers and the knuckles, the whole of the hand, not just the heel of the hand. If you have any wrist issues, you need to be very mindful. If you have like maybe carpal tunnel syndrome, carpal tunnel syndrome, you might even need to have your forearms that feel like a little forearm dog, like so. Just demonstrate very quickly, something like that. Okay. Be mindful of what's going on in the arms. You'll tend to want to collapse out to the side. You need to firm the arms, make them strong. You need to wrap the triceps, engage and stabilize the arms and the shoulders into the body. So you're really sending energy from your foundation back through the body and back up through the spine to really create that primary length from the hands right up to the hips. And then perhaps if you've got the flexibility, you can start to maybe make the legs work a little bit more and start to stretch and lengthen the legs as well. So just to talk you through it, we'll come through it again from this all fours position, hands underneath the wrists underneath the shoulders and the knees, and knees underneath your hips, perhaps a little bit further apart. Turn the toes under and spreading the hands. Really take the time now, roll those triceps in towards each other, set the arms, the shoulders down the back and then push back, lift the buttock bones up with the knees bent so your head comes down, the torso and thighs close and then you can slowly stretch and get that leg and then maybe work the legs a little bit more. Take a few breaths working into this shape please. If you're very mobile and flexible, you might want to think about drawing the front body in, the ribs into the body, the armpits, the collarbones into the midline of the spine. But really, keep the breath calm and steady. Get that sense of length and extension from the hands to the hips. Listen to the sound of the breath. Notice if it's short or quick or shallow. If you need to come down into a child's pose at any time, do so. Otherwise, last two or three breaths. When you're ready, you can come down and have a little breather, have a little rest in child's pose. Feel free to try that again or stay resting in child's pose. Another option you might want to consider, especially if you have um, high blood pressure or a headache or just want to be a bit more calming and soothing with the posture, is to use the brick underneath the head, either this height or perhaps whatever height, a little bit more extra height, you can actually just rest the forehead into the shape, perhaps like so, like so. Very calming and soothing. You might even want to grip the sides of the mat to really open up the shoulders, create some space in the neck and trapezes.
Okay, so that was Ardo Mukha Svanasana, or Downward Facing Dog. I hope you enjoyed the, the benefits and the work of that challenging posture. Please take it into the rest of your day. You might even want to try the next video in the series, or perhaps enjoy the relaxation Shavasana video.